homestead. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and summer or winter depending on where you live so far. I'm just going to upload a lovely recipe for courgette relish that I made the other day and part of it was prepared in the evening and the rest the following day. So I hope you'll enjoy that video. See you soon. Okay, so now I'm just going to weigh out one kilo of courgettes for this recipe. So my garden started producing courgettes now, which is wonderful. So I need one kilo, which I think is equivalent to about two pounds. So I'll just um, chop the, turn that on. Just chop top and tail of the courgettes, give them a wash, and just so this will probably be about five to get a kilo of the courgettes. Mm. So I normally just pick them and keep adding them um, to a bag, and then when I've got enough of them, I'll use them to make something like. Um, we often will have them, when they, when they get quite large, a bit smaller than the marrow, I just cut them in half, scoop out the seeds, and then I'll fill them with um, something like a chilli, it can be a vegetarian chilli or a meat chilli, and that just makes a really good, healthy, quick, low carb sort of meal, um, which is really nice. And the other thing I like making is courgette fritters. I mean, we have those quite a lot as well. And that is a, it's a lovely meal to have courgette fritters, corn on the cob, and a, and a green salad. It's one of my favourite summer dinners. Okay, so there's 769 grams. So I'll just keep going. A couple more. And a friend phoned me. She had some friends over for dinner last night. And she asked if I wanted some courgettes. I didn't plant as many this year, so that was perfect because I did need a few extra. So then you also need, it's supposed to be one red and one green uh, capsicum. So I've used a little bit of that one. So I'm actually going to use a yellow one and a red one. So these were only $1.00 each at the shop so I thought that was, that was pretty good so I got a few of them because I knew that I'd be wanting to get this pickle made so I mustn't have made as many jars last year as I like to because we ran out so I normally make tomato relish courgette relish and chow chow pickle and those pickles will last us with our sandwiches uh, for most of the year so I need to um, just start building up our supplies since we haven't had any and I've had to buy some. And I, yeah, I just don't like buying it. I just don't eat, think it has the same flavour. It's never as good what comes from the supermarket. And everything that you grow yourself is organic. And you know exactly how long it's been in your fridge or if it's fresh picked, it's just wonderful. So I'm just going to prepare the last of these peppers and then I've got a couple of onions here. I'm just going to dice those up fine and then um, I'm going to grate these courgettes and put them into the big bowl. So I hope everybody had a lovely Christmas. We had a wonderful Christmas. We had our um, family here, my mum and dad, and two lots of our children and their families. So it was quite a busy day. Uh, I think it was 19 for Christmas Day. And then we had a lovely New Year with some friends around on New Year's Eve. Uh, so that was wonderful. So there's been a lot of um, entertaining going on. And yeah, just been a busy time. 
have also I've got our fruit trees. It's the time of year when all the stone fruit's been ready. So I've we picked all the fruit off the apricot tree and I made um, some lovely apricot jam and um, I preserved some, bottled some uh, apricots and I also um, preserved and froze some of the peaches and we enjoyed a lovely peach crumble the other night. Um, so it was actually a peach pot because we didn't get any peaches off. We got one peach off our peach tree this year because the birds got the whole lot. Because they were really close to Christmas and my husband said we need to go out there and pick them and I think we were just so busy and I was so tired. And I said, oh, let's just do it after Christmas. But, so by the time Christmas was over, the peaches were all over. So that was the end of that. So that'll teach me next year to get on with it a little bit quicker. So, um, what was I going to say? I can't remember. So, talking about peaches. Well, that's what I was going to say. Um, this year, for the first time, we didn't put nets over our apricots or um, peach pot trees. And so what I did was I just waited until the birds started to eat the fruit. And then I knew, I just kept checking it every day, and as soon as I knew that they started to eat it, like, you know, there was two or three and they were having a good go at it, I realised that, yes, they are ripe, and it's time to pick them. So we just picked the whole lot, put them in in baskets, and I laid them out, and um, I've got some lovely big old-fashioned like breakfast trays, wicker ones, and so I can lay the fruit out in a single layer, and then I just leave them like that to slowly ripen, and then as they ripened, we, um, like I said, preserved them or gave them away to friends and family. Um, so it's just so wonderful having those fruit trees. So at the moment we've got most enormous plums out there. Our tree is completely laden. I did take some photos. So the other problem I've got with my new computer um, is there isn't a slot to put my little SD card in. So I've got to go into town and find some sort of little adapter thing that I can slot it into so I haven't been able to upload any photos to add to the video so that's another reason why um, there just hasn't been any action from me because there's just been too many things to sort out with the new computer and um, in this whole camera situation so now I'm just going to go through and I just I've got this grater it's got it's a little bit bigger holes than what my other one is. And I'm just going to grate up all of these four heads. So you can do this with the food processor, but I like... Um, I find that the food processor tends to make them just a bit too fine and it seems like it's a little bit mushy. So I like to just do them all by hand. So I'd really love it if you would... Um, just let me know what you did for Christmas or um, what sort of pickles and things that you like to make in the summertime. I mean, I, I'm pretty boring. Like I said, I've got my three standard pickles, chow chow pickle, I think there's another one, mustard pickle, this courgette relish and tomato relish um, that I always make. And so what I plant in the garden is normally always courgettes, tomatoes. I don't plant peppers because it doesn't get hot enough um, for long enough where we live to be able to grow them. I mean, maybe if I had a hot house, that would probably fix that problem. But when we lived, um, even just an hour from here in a place called Napier, which is by the sea, I used to be able to grow peppers and eat plants really well. 
but I've also given up trying to grow eggplants down here because I think the most I got last year was one and it wasn't even a very good size. So after a couple of years of unsuccessful attempts, unless we get a, a greenhouse, I don't think I'm going to be wasting my money on buying pepper or eggplant plants. Or yet, or they still always do well. And the other thing is that, well, one of the main things I like is that growing it myself, it's organic, um, but it can be a lot more expensive to go and buy organic produce while it is around here. Um, and when you're just wanting it for pickles and things, it just seems a waste to me to spend a lot of money on things like courgettes or tomatoes when you can just grow those yourself. So we're having a funny old summer here. It hasn't been consistently hot like it normally is. We've had rain, we've had quite a lot of cold days. I was even sitting there today on the couch reading my book and I had a quilt on my knees for goodness sake. So that's just very unusual weather for this time in January. Anyway I've just got two more courgettes to do so I won't bore you with my rambling while well, I'm just going to grate those and then I'll just talk a little bit about what spices I'm going to add and I'll pick this up again tomorrow morning. So this all gets um all this mixture in the bowl here I just add salt to it I'll leave the recipe with this I, it, salt goes over the top then I cover it with a cloth and the next morning um, I just drain it and rinse it I'll see you tomorrow morning morning everyone it's the next day and I'm just about to start rinsing my vegetables I've had them um, just here in this big bowl overnight and you can see the liquid all that liquid that started to come out of it <clears throat> so I'm just going to rinse that I've got a colander and a sieve set up and I'm just going to rinse that so I'll just show you how I do that I decided to use that instead of my beeswax wrap just because the onion's quite strong and I didn't want the beeswax wrap to have a stink of onion. Okay, so um, so what I normally do is I just start getting spoonfuls of this mixture and I put it into the sieve which is sitting in the colander and then I just rinse it with the cold water just get all that extra saltiness out otherwise it's just a little bit too salty for my liking but it takes me quite a while to do this um, so I just taste a little bit um, after a while just to see if it's, how it's tasting and then I know if some of that salt's just been washed off. Yes, already that's just fine. So once I've done that, then I just put it into my pot and then I'll add all the other ingredients. So I'm just going to go through and wash all the rest of it. So I'll see you in a minute. Now please excuse all my dishes. I haven't done the dishes yet. You'll find that after you've rinsed it and put all the vegetables in there, there's still more water that's there. So I'm just going to drain that off. And then we'll add in all the vinegar and spices. Okay, so into our pot with all the um, courgettes chopped onion and peppers. I'm going to add two and a half cups of sugar. Now I'm just using regular old sugar, just white sugar. It's not organic. It's just regular sugar. I buy just large 5 kg bags of this when I'm going to be doing all my jams and pickles. Um, it would cost a lot more to buy organic sugar 
um, in New Zealand for doing this sort of thing, so it's not something that I've ever done. But if that's what you prefer to do, then go ahead and do that. So I'm also going to add two and a half cups of white vinegar. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but my husband and I have been so enjoying watching um, TV series on BBC, our BBC TV series via the computer. And all the series are on YouTube because we don't actually have a television, so that's how we just watch whatever we want to watch. Um, I'll just mix all that together. So I'm going to leave a link to these um, series that we watch. Now these are for people who love history. So the presenters on it are, is a lady, Ruth Goodman. She is a historian. And there's two men that are archaeologists. So what they do is they, they choose um, a period in history. So we've watched one that was called Tales from the Green Valley. And it was set on a Welsh farm um, that was, for, I think, a 400-year-old farm. So they reenact life in that period for one full calendar year. And it's just, we just love it. And so they wear the period clothing and they do everything exactly like it would have been done back in the day. So we started with that one, Tales from the Green Valley. Um, and then we went on to one called, I think the next one was... The BBC, um, BBC War Farm. So it was during the war time, what it would have been like, or what it was like for farmers. And so that one was just fantastic as well. Then we watched Victorian Farm, and they all go for about 10 episodes, which are about 45 minutes to an hour long. And we're just about finished watching Edwardian Farm, and I think that's the last one, so it's going to be really sad when it's over. Um, but I'll, share, I'll leave a little link to those videos because they're just so great. Anyway, back to the pickle. Alright, so we've got the vinegar and the sugar in here. And now, um, where's my teaspoon? So I'm just going to add some celery seeds. Now I've been making this um, one and a half teaspoons. I think I normally add two teaspoons for years. And it's just has the most beautiful flavour. And the celery seeds just give it a gorgeous little wee hint of celery without having celery in it. So then we have one teaspoon of turmeric. It gives a lovely yellow flavour and char I tend to always add a little bit more spices because I like my relishes and pickles to have a lot of flavour and then I just have some mustard mustard powder and um, I'm going to use one and a half teaspoons of that so this is a great way to use up um, courgettes and I think, I'm sure this one you can even make with green beans as well, which is a really nice pickle. Um, and then it's two teaspoons of curry powder. Now this is just medium hot curry powder. Right, so I've actually, I'm in the middle, also in the middle of making some sourdough bread. I've got a little loaf in the oven and I'm going to... Um, do some English muffins shortly. So I'm just going to sit this mixture <coughs> up here on the stove and then my husband's coming home for lunch shortly. So I'll cook it up um, after lunch. So that all gets boiled together for 30 minutes and then while it's still on the boil it's ladled into hot jars and topped with a sterilized lid. But I'll be back once I've got this on and boiling. Okay, so I've brought the relish up to a boil and, I'm, and you time it 
30 minutes. So this has got 10 minutes left to go. So I'm just going to prepare some water and vinegar which will be used to thicken it. And then in the oven I've got my jars heating. So I heat those to 100 degrees Celsius and, um, and then I'm just going to pour some boiling water over my jars, my lids I mean. So I'm just going to make up a little mixture, if I can get this lid off, of white vinegar with a little bit of flour, which I'm going to use to thicken the pickle. I'm just going to a spoon and probably about a fat tablespoon of flour and then just add a little bit of flour, uh, vinegar just to get that mixed up to like a runny paste. Try and get all the lumps out. Then I'll add that in and cook it until the pickle's thickened up a bit and then I'll ladle it into the hot jar. Okay so the relish is all ready now. It's been thickened. I actually thickened it um, with an additional little bit of corn flour. And I got a clean dish towel and then I just dried those um, lids that had, had the boiling water. And then a wee tip that I um, found out when I was watching Miss Laurie from Whippoorwill Holler was just to wipe the tops of your jars with white vinegar. So I've got a little bit of white vinegar on the dish towel, I mean on the napkin and I'll just use that to wipe it. Alright, so I'm getting my tongs and I'm just going to start getting jars out. These hot jars out. And I don't I think this is a little bit big for it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do it anyway. Probably just make a bit of a mess. Which would be a little bit typical for me. So let's spoon our hot courgette radish into our jars. Now I've never had any problem ever with this relish. It's always um, is delicious. It always works out. I love to um, give it just as a little gift. Some summers I make loads and loads of it. One year I think I made about 50 different jars of relish with the tomato and the chow chow and all that. Right, so actually I'm going to use this little clean dishcloth I've got here first and just to wipe them with that and then I'll go round with the vinegar. And just pop the lid on and get a cloth so you don't burn yourself and then just make sure those jars are on tight. Now I think most ladies who are foodies like me have probably got these cast iron fingers where you're used to picking up hot things and so I'm just sort of able to handle it. Now all these jars that I'm using, and this is what I normally do, I just recycle jars from different things that I've bought. So the reason I'm telling you that is just so you know, you don't have to go out and buy new jars if you don't have the money for that. You can just recycle jars as long as the lid has got the little wee suction top thing. I don't, I don't know if you can do it with other lids, probably you can, but I always look for those lids. And I find with relishes, they can only be used once because the acid that's in the vinegar um, just starts to eat through 
the metal and it causes like a little wee rust spot so I always only use them um, just once so it looks like I might get about five jars today that one's a little bit overfilled I'm just gonna take a little bit out that one will probably have a little bit more Okay, so clean cloth around the rim first. So I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration for how to make a inexpensive um, relish that you can put in your pantry. And we like to have we have a relish on our sandwiches because we eat a lot of sourdough bread in this house and i'll have pickle on my bread at least once a day and we'll just go around with the little napkin it's got the vinegar on it and then put on our clean lid one for that one and then tighten it And then of course, like everything when you're bottling, now oh, don't tell me this lid doesn't fit this one. Well, if it doesn't, I just use that one as a fridge one. So that means it's going straight into the fridge once it's cooled, and we'll be using that for ourselves. I'll probably just transfer it into a wet jar. No, it's the wrong sort of lid. Not to worry, I've got another bit that I can use for that. Uh, it hasn't, it won't have been sterilised, so I'm going to just pop this one straight into the fridge and we'll just, we'll just use So that's one just for us. And I'll get probably one more jar out of what's left. So often I will double this recipe. Just, to, just because once you've got sort of putting all the effort into doing all of the um, preparation for making it, I try and make it a good quantity at a time just because time is very precious when you have a lot of things going on and I told you this would be a bit messy because my funnel doesn't actually fit but if I was using the proper canning jars then it does fit So I'm just going to finish off here, tidy up my mess, and I will see you next time. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll give this pickle recipe a try. Um, I might just show you my, I'll turn that round. Mm -hmm.